All right, so as we can see from the box here, I have the LTE version for you today. And I think this is what they call the obsidian black color, I believe. So let's go ahead and get these tabs. Check this thing out. Here we go. Looks like some instructions down here. Here we have the Pixel Watch itself. Then inside here, we have a smaller strap as well as a charging cable. This charging cable actually looks to be quite long, which I quite like. Oh yeah, that's a very nice <laughs> long charging cable there. All right, so here is the watch itself. Let's go ahead and show it off before I turn it on and get it set up. There's that new heart rate sensor, which is supposed to be pretty accurate. And it really does have a quite like, I don't wanna say heavy feel to it, but it feels solid, I guess you could say. Okay, so you're gonna need a couple different apps to fully set this up. So the first app you're gonna need is the Google Pixel Watch app. So let's go and open this up, go and press continue. Agree to all the terms. Then it's going to ask to sign into your Google account, which you should probably be signed in on your Android phone probably already. And then now here's the second portion of the, what we have to do. So now we actually have to connect your Fitbit account and this does require the actual Fitbit app. So these are two separate apps at this point. Then here's where you can access the Google Assistant with Hey Google. And then since I already have it already set up, we're just gonna go and activate voice match. And there we go. And again, the reason that it skipped a lot of steps here is that I already have Google Assistant already set up on my phone and my Google account. And then here is where it's gonna ask you to set a lock on your watch. So you can either set a pattern or a pin. So if you set pattern right here, here is where you can do, let's say that. Confirming it, there we go. And then here's where you're gonna set up Google Wallet. And I already have a payment card set up in Google Pay. And then we can select which apps for the Google Watch we wanna have on here. So installed in the device already, it looks like we have Spotify, Google Camera, Google Keep, Strava is already gonna be pre-installed as well as a Whole19 Golf GPS app. And then there's gonna be some recommended apps that uh, you can download that they just automatically pop up here. So that's gonna ask for some of your permissions. Allow, 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 allow. And now it's going to be doing a little bit of a setup. All right, so the watch is gonna be restarting now. Like pretty much all devices, it's going to have a system update once you receive the watch. So that's what it's gonna be doing right now. And we will check back in just a second. So it's actually restarted at this point. So now let's go ahead and connect it to my Fitbit account. So uh, I already have the Fitbit app already pre-installed here and I was using it with a different Fitbit device, but now we can do uh, connect a device right here. So what are we trying to set up? You see in the list here, in addition to the actual Fitbit branded wearables here, we also have the Google Pixel Watch right up top. So we're gonna go ahead and click that, set it up, agree to a few more things. And with the Google Pixel Watch, as well as pretty much every Fitbit device, it comes with a six, free, a six month free Fitbit um, trial, basically. So we're gonna go ahead and start that membership. So there we go, it has already synced. So if we go back, here's gonna be where, it's gonna be a pretty standard Fitbit interface right here. I actually just published my Fitbit Inspire 3 review, so you're welcome to go and check out that video for a little bit of a tour of the Fitbit app. But the Fitbit app really is a very well-designed app in terms of collecting all your health and activity tracking data. So that's the setup with the Fitbit app. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of a tour of the Pixel Watch here. So first off, we have that uh, pattern recognition that we have right there. If I swipe up from the bottom, this is going to be your notifications. So there's an email and a couple other notifications that we have here. So if we click on this email, there we go. Signed up for my trial of the Fitbit Premium Membership clearing that by just swiping to the right. And then if we swipe from the top, these are this is where you're gonna be able to access 
your settings, quick settings, like such as like airplane mode, brightness of the display, turn that up. Uh, Google Wallet as well right here, as well as a flashlight. Here is where it's kind of interesting. So you see how they actually blend the flashlight into the black bezel of the case. So this has been a little bit of a uh, controversial topic, I guess you could say, is that the bezel, it definitely does show up quite a bit on some areas of the interface. Okay, and then if we swipe to the right or the left, we can see different tiles here. So first up, we're gonna have the steps tile right here, uh, heart rate, uh, exercise shortcuts, and then here's where we're gonna click on, tap on more to access all the exercises that you can have on here. And what's nice about the Pixel Watch is that it does have all these profiles already on the watch itself. You don't have to go and uh, delete any like the Inspire 3 where you could only have uh, six at one time on there. There you go. There's obviously no sleep data quite yet because uh, I'm just setting this up. And then I don't have any schedule uh, events today, weather. And then here's gonna be Google map information once you have already set up your home and or work address in uh, your phone. And then for the rest of the apps that it comes with, so here's gonna be an agenda, alarm, Google Assistance, your contacts, a find my phone feature. Here's gonna be the Fitbit exercise app, Fitbit Today, which is gonna just show all your actual health data from today, like steps, heart rate, flashlight feature, Google Wallet. You also have a hand wash timer. It's gonna be Google Maps. Media controls for controlling the music playback on your phone or possibly on the watch itself. Uh, your text messages, personal safety features, phone, Google Play Store, settings, stopwatch, timer, weather, and then YouTube music. And it's still installing the other apps that um, I have chosen from uh, the setup process right now. And then from the watch face itself too, you can go ahead and tap on these little, uh, I guess you could say this complications right here. Click that, it'll show your heart rate. So again, don't really have much information at this point on this particular watch. If I click steps over here, it'll bring up this, where it'll just show you your steps. Then if you click on this center one right here, it'll kind of give you uh, more of the summary information for the steps taken during the day, floors climbed, distance for the day, calories burned, active zone minutes, exercise uh, in terms of how many days you've exercised in the last five days, and then hourly activity, heart rate, resting heart rate, sleep. All right, so it definitely has been said that it's a bit tricky to get the bands on and off. And so let's go ahead and take the band off now. You're apparently supposed to press this button right here and then rotate the band in the direction of the button. Okay, easy enough to take off, but how is it to put back on? Okay, not bad. All right, so the trick here I think is that you don't necessarily wanna line it up with the gap right there. So it's not like you wanna just like slide it into place like that. You actually wanna have it as far over, kind of overlapping this button over here. You kind of see that? And it, it'll actually kind of feel like it's setting in place and then you just rotate it in. So let's go and do that again really quick. Press the button, rotate it in the direction of the button and then to get it back in, again, don't line it up like that, but actually overlap it and it'll kind of rest into place. Push it in, rotate it, there you go. And in terms of the construction, it really is a nice looking watch. So this is the, like I said, I think it's the Obsidian Black version that I have right here. You'll notice really nice dark case color right there. This is a really nice finish. It feels very premium indeed. The crown also, um, if I remember correctly from the uh, other versions of the watch or the other, other color options, the crown is kind of like the silver color that really, really sticks out. This black color is a lot more subdued. And then everything just like kind of blends into each other right here. It's, it is really, really nice looking. For wearability, I have a 185 millimeter circumference wrist. And this is the longer band that I have right here. It also does come with the shorter band. So the longer band fits me probably about right. So there you go. That's what it looks like on my 185 millimeter circumference wrist. And it looks like I still have two notches remaining right there, but plenty of notches here. So you can definitely have a much larger wrist size. Let's go ahead and check out what the 
small band will feel like on here though. Oh, look at that. I'm kind of a pro at this now. Yeah, that's really not that bad with a little bit of practice. Not that bad. So with the small band, so I could wear either band. The small band, I only have one hole remaining right there. So I actually may rock the small band just because there's less band to actually tuck back in, which you know you kind of have to like shove the <laughs> lots of extra band on the long band in there. So um, yeah, I may actually rock the small band, but totally works for being such a small case size. To be honest with you, it's really not. It doesn't really feel that all that small on the wrist. And again, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it actually really does have a nice solid feel to it. It's not like heavy or anything like that, but it just feels like well built, I guess you could say. And then, like I said, I will be doing a full comparison of the Pixel Watch to the Sense 2 at some point, but I will just go ahead and give you at least a size comparison straight out of the uh, gate on here, just so you can kind of see what it's all about. But as you can see, it's actually pretty similar to the Sense 2. It's probably just a hair smaller in the whole scheme of things, but I will go ahead and show you how this looks on the wrist as well. These do use two different uh, heart rate sensors on the back, but in terms of how these look. Let's go ahead and do the Pixel Watch first. So there you go. And then let's try on the Sense 2. So definitely the Sense 2 does look bigger on the wrist just because of the square display. So here's kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. But the Pixel Watch does sit off the wrist or it seems like it sits off the wrist just a little bit higher and if we compare the height of the watches the pixel watch definitely is a little bit thicker so i hope that helps you get an idea of the setup process as well as a general idea of getting around the interface but like i said i'll have a full in-depth review of the pixel watch that'll be coming up soon so make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes out and if the information in this video did help you out at all don't be shy about hitting that like button down below in the meantime thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video